So while I don't typically review micro brands in depth on this channel, now and then a watch comes along with the design and overall value proposition that is so compelling that I feel obligated to cover it in greater detail. And that's exactly the case with this brew metric, a chronograph with a unique design format that comes in at a very competitive price. Let's jump into it. Now, before we jump in looking at this brew metric, definitely check out our blog looking at some of the best micro brands in the entire industry. We have 50 brands on that list. I've been able to handle, uh, fortunately, many different small makers out there. And those are just some that I'm a personal fan of. Some other people on our team are also a big fan of. So those are just great brands to look at. If you're all about micro brands, I would definitely recommend checking it out. We will have a link in the description down below. Starting with just a bit of background, Brew is a micro brand conceived by its industrial designer, founder, Jonathan Ferrer, at a cafe in New York City back in 2015. Compared to many micro brands, the majority of which are simply rehashing iconic sports watches from the 1960s or of that era, Brew aims to capture the spirit of coffee and cafe culture, or more specifically, the mindful savoring of a moment in time presented by slowly downing and enjoying a cup of coffee. And while that brand philosophy may come off a bit esoteric and deep into the hipster territory, the watches themselves demonstrate Ferrer's acumen as an industrial designer and a professor. He actually taught at NJIT of the subject, incorporating visual elements that deepen the relationship with coffee, having been borrowed from gauges, dials, and contours of classic espresso machines. By launching on Kickstarter and keeping a pulse on the often fickle wants and needs of enthusiasts by engaging in watch forums and in-person meetups, Brew has remained small, agile, and aware, garnering a passionate following among enthusiasts who appreciate the design language and unique concept. Last year, Brew released one of its most popular watches yet with the Metric, a Seiko-powered Mecha Quartz chronograph with a retro-inspired case and bracelet design paired with a coffee-specific timing functionality. The level of hype was high for a brand of this size, and the first run of Metrics sold out almost instantly with a much-anticipated restock plan for February of this year. For the purposes of this review, we'll take a look at the Brew Metric Retro with a black primary surface offset by several intriguing pops of color in a way that is very much a evoking this 1970s era of watch design. Digging into the overview portion of this video, starting with a conversation on the case and wearing experience presented by the Brew Metric. We have a surprisingly small cushion style case measuring at 36 millimeters in width and an abbreviated 41.5 millimeters in length. Given the hybrid quartz movement, the thickness is also restrained compared to mechanical chronographs especially, this one coming in at just 10.7 millimeters from the bottom of the laser engraved screwed on case back to the top of the flat sapphire crystal. Despite the measured 36 millimeter width, for me, the metric wears slightly larger, performing more like a 36 and a half millimeter watch on the wrist, resembling the shape of the odd Speedmaster reference, the 125 from the 1970s. In addition to the design, the level of finishing across the case and bracelet is impressive for the price, pairing a majority linear brush finish with polished facets and bevels throughout. Resting on top of the case and set just below the level of the crystal, we have a faceted brush bezel that complements the case shape while contrasting with the polished coffee bean sign push-pull crown with prominent pump pushers on both sides. Set between the hooded standard 20 millimeter lugs that visually tend to evoke an integrated design, the metric leans into a tapering three-link bracelet that for me on the front presents like a single link design with vertical brushing complemented by a polished facet at each of the link's outermost edge. Keeping in mind that this is an under $400 watch, the quality of the bracelet is very solid to say the least, complete with pin adjusted links and an 18 millimeter push button operated clasp containing several points of micro adjustment to ensure a precise fit and is topped off with Brew's coffee bean logo. Taking up a view of the watch's anterior surface, the more rectangular case architecture transitioned to the circular dial beneath the safety of a sapphire crystal with the raised outskirts setting a perimeter around the dial with a chrome reflection. Blending a modern execution with retro elements, the overall design of the metric dial could be best described as playful and unorthodox. 
The primary surface is offered in a deep shade of matte black, allowing the polished faceted indices and stylized retro baton hands to pop, a factor aided by the yellow accents on the hour and minute hand. The date wheel is color matched and stealthily placed at the 430 to offer balance to the opposing dial elements. A white small seconds register is located in the six o'clock position and a neatly integrated 60 minute chronograph with the 60 minute big eye sub register spanning the nine o'clock to the 11 o'clock portion of the dial, exhibiting its own pops of color with orange to pair with the orange chronograph second hand anchored at the dial center. More than a simple 60 minute chronograph, the metric also leans into its design language with a special chapter ring implemented with the eye-catching shade of teal at that five to seven o'clock position. But with the 25 to 35 second portion in yellow, this is visually demonstrating the ideal period for time to pull a shot of espresso. Something I can sadly say would be useful for my day-to-day -day life as I did get into espresso uh, during quarantine because what else are you gonna do in 2020? Anyways, this is probably not useful for many, but it's cool to see a brand lean into a non-standard concept with a level of passion and attention to detail. Turning the watch over, we have another coffee bean emblem on the case back that along with the crown and pushers, secure this watch's reasonable 50 meters of water resistance, while also keeping the watch over the seldom seen hybrid Mecha Quartz caliber lying beneath. So chronographs, as a rule, are one of the more expensive and mechanically difficult to achieve complications to add to a mechanical watch, often adding hundreds or even thousands of dollars to time-only functionality. With this being the case, the only way to really get into a mechanical chronograph under $1,000 is to roll with a Chinese-produced Siegel movement or find a rare exception of a modular ETA 28942 system making itself available. But again, those are pretty rare. And while course chronographs can be far simpler and less expensive to produce, the actual experience of using a chronograph and its pushers from a course perspective really relies on activating functions of a tiny circuit board and falls way behind its mechanical counterparts in terms of its feel. However, enter the Seiko VK68 Mecha Quartz Caliber, one of the more popular hybrid quartz options on the market. Put simply, a Mecha Quartz Chronograph Caliber splits the difference between a quartz movement and a mechanical chronograph taking the consistent accuracy, durability, and low cost associated with a battery-powered quartz oscillating timekeeper and pairs it with the hammers and levers that enable a positive mechanical experience at the pushers. Despite an appealing package and impressive value proposition, these kinds of calibers are actually fairly rare, but for me, split the difference nicely while also bringing some of the appeal of operating a mechanical chrono to an otherwise impossible price point. In addition, while the tiny running seconds hand on the small seconds does tick, the chronograph seconds actually sweeps, perhaps not as smoothly as say a four hertz movement on many Valjoux calibers, but enough to stop the silly court snobbery of some collectors taking place. In addition, the VK68's battery life is quoted at three years, making the annual cost of ownership of something like this even cheaper going forward compared to the costly service associated with keeping a mechanical chronograph in working order. And that's even considering the kind of third party options from the likes of Valjoux. So unpacking the specs on this one, we're looking at a quick set date and hacking on this watch. Also will have an accuracy of quoted plus to minus 20 seconds per month. But now that we've looked a little bit closer at the metric, let's just talk about where it sits in the market and kind of the pros and cons associated with going for a watch like this. So one point I bring up when looking at a micro brand, and I really try to stress this at an affordable perspective, people that are just getting into watches, sometimes they just buy a ton of watches, their taste change, all of our tastes change over time. Sometimes you don't wanna necessarily be stuck with a brand that maybe isn't as well known that you could potentially move on from and find a suitor for. Brew, I don't think that's gonna be as much of an issue because I think people are very high on their watches and they do low numbers. So I don't think you need a ton of interest in order to support that. But there are a few cons I would mention with a watch like this. 50 meters of water resistance might not be enough for some people out there. I think that's a small point considering this is a chronograph. You're probably not gonna be swimming with this thing. It does have an unorthodox design, which could be a good or bad. The loom is not good on this one. So if you're going for a loom monster, this would not be it. Also in terms of just some snobs out there that don't don't like just anything quartz, uh, that might be a downside for a watch like this. And also some might just wanna opt for going for a mechanical chronograph in this range, which will come from the likes of Siegel. 
But on the flip side, there's a reason why I decided to cover a watch like this, and I thought that it deserved a little bit of a deeper look. I think Brew, from a design perspective, despite maybe pulling from some lesser known references of the past of the mid 20th century, I would say they have more of a unique take on what their design formula is compared to many micro brands out there. Basically, what I find for many micros is just, okay, let's just take something that's very popular and then try to make it at the least expensive price that we can and just try to throw out as many units as possible. Brew is a bit more calculated with their design. You could tell if you look at all of their watches, it's not like you've just seen a direct comparative big brand making a watch like that. They try to offer up their own flair, and I think they, unlike many micros out there, have a true design DNA. And that's rare for even mainstream brands on the market. And actually meeting Jonathan in the past, I could tell that he really does, as an industrial designer, care about what he's outputting. And I think in the end product, you see that uh, with the attention to detail and the smaller elements. But for this, the price is the number one thing that is going for this watch. You're talking about a uniquely designed under $400 watch that has a Seiko Mecha Quartz movement, which I know some people are against quartz. I think that's silly, but I understand the perspective as well. Some people love the romantic idea of mechanical uh, just watch. But when you're talking about chronographs, there's really no alternative unless you're going for a Siegel movement that's also gonna be thicker. This is allowing it to really fit a mold and an offering in the market that I don't think there's as much competition. And there's also not as much of a direct comparative uh, choice when you're looking at mechanical options. This really is an offering that is unique when you talk about the dimension set as well as where it falls in price. So you're getting that quartz accuracy while getting some mechanical sweep with that second hand, which I think is cool. Finishing on the piece is also impressive. You're dealing with a very nice bracelet. I wouldn't say it's quite on the Tissot PRX in regards to finishing, but the clasp is better. It does have micro adjustment in it. It's a nice clasp for around $400. This is one of these watches where you're like looking at it and like, I don't really know how this is able to be achieved uh, and make money in some ways. Uh, but I think that's just the upside of not having as much overhead, which I know Baru does not. But I think when you factor in the price, you're getting the accuracy while getting some romantic function of that sweep of the second hand and getting a unique design, all those things factored together. This is a fun, lighthearted watch and it falls in a range where I think you could probably just look at it, even if you're a more established collector, be like, hey, $400, you know what? Might not be the most expensive watch in my collection, but maybe I just wanna treat myself as something that's a bit more out there and fun and daring, and I don't wanna pay a crazy amount. These types of designs, I think, work so much better under $500 because it's not as much of a stretch. You might be thinking, how and when am I gonna wear this thing? But when you're only talking about under $500, which still, I mean, is a nice chunk of change, but in the world of watches, relatively speaking, is much more attainable. And I think where this one is packaged, I think Brew did a fantastic job. It's another great design from this brand. And I think they're just a brand to continue to look out for because they do have their own unique style, which really separates them from a very busy, uh, smaller micro brand crowd. But all right, guys, that is my take on the Brew Metric. I'd love to see what you guys think of this watch uh, in general. What is your take on Brew? Have you ever seen their watches before? Please leave comments down below and just what your thoughts are about this piece. In addition to that, if you like this video and just wanna see more coverage of smaller brands like this in the future, uh, please give this video a thumbs up. I really would appreciate that. That's a great indicator uh, for me going forward if you guys have an appetite for this type of content. A lot of times the views are just really not there and it's harder to kind of justify looking at these smaller brands as much as I really like doing it, because just like you, I get a little bit fatigued looking at the same brands over and over again, but I really do wanna make sure it's something that you guys want to see, so that would be a great indication for me. Also check out teddybaldeser.com, the blog down below looking at different micro brands, as well as just check out the different watches that we have for sale. Full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, also offering a full factory warranty for all of our new products that we sell. In addition, we also have a pre-owned section that we definitely recommend checking out, getting new watches in all the time from great luxury brands. Also, if you're looking to move on from one of your watches, definitely fill out the form and one of our team members will be in touch with you if it's a good fit for our pre-owned program. But all right, guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.